Hello, my friend. My name is Anton from Conung.com, and today is the sixth video of the Code Express series. We will talk today about the Python dictionary. This is the last type of the variables we haven't covered so far. Obviously, there is much more, more comparing to what we have covered. What we have covered so far was a string, Boolean, a numeric data such as integer, dot, float, and uh, list. The Python dictionary is a type of the data which allows you to create a structured data. Uh, where the certain key is associated with a certain value. This is one of the perhaps most widely used data today, especially when we spoke about the network automation, because the Python dictionary is an internal representation of this or that YAN model, which would allow you to uh, create a structured data which your device is necessary to take and process. So let's get started. Let's take a look how you could create the Python dictionary. Let me share my screen as we usually do in our videos. As you see, I'm connected to the VM where we're typically working during our course. And um, let's uh, create a Python file containing the Python dictionary. As usual, I'm looking for a pass for the file we create a new file, which would be called. Uh, dict.py, so Python dictionary, and we changed immediately its permissions so that the file could be executed. So, go inside our file. We, as usual, start with the pass to the interpreter, so Sheban followed by the pass to the Python. Now we can start working with the variables itself. So, in order to create the Python dictionary, we would need to put as usual, the name of the variable, then equal sign, and then opening and closing curly bracket. So the curly bracket is a symbol which uh, allow, which instructs the Python that the element we are creating is a dictionary. Inside the dictionary, all the data, I mean the keys, the name of the key should be provided in the uh, single or double quote. So let's create two keys, IP, it would have uh, some sort of IP addresses. Uh, uh, when you how they provided is exactly the same rules are applied which we have covered so far. So string should be provided a single double quote. The numeric data should be provided without the quote. If you'd like this data to be um, numeric and same as applicable for Boolean, it should be provided without any quotes. So we create a um, first key. So the key is IP address is associated with uh, where you 192.168.100.1. And the second key would be a prefix, and we will provide here the numeric date you see we provided uh, as an integer without any quotes. Uh, what is important between the elements of your uh, dictionary, you need to provide a quote. So only the last element would not uh, be appended by quote or the rest between each other should have exactly in the same way like we have covered previously for the lists. Uh, let's print the output of uh, this or the content of this element by using uh, uh, print uh, function. So the uh, dictionary is, we use a formatted string for it. So we use a dot format function, which uh, allows us to put the content of our uh, variable inside the print function. So you see the variable, the dictionary is very simple. Let's um, execute this string. So, uh, the, sorry, this script, and you see that exactly now we are getting the dict is this is a fixed text that we have put as a part of our um, print function execution. And then we see the content of the uh, dictionary. So you see that the quotes, curly quotes, opening and uh, sorry, curly and closing brackets are provided. Same way like we was previously working with the uh, um, function, uh, sorry, with the list. And when we was printing the whole list, we was uh, getting the uh, square brackets as well. Now, in order to get any particular element, again, the format uh, would be similar to what we have seen so far in the list, but we need uh, to provide uh, in the same way as we was providing index, but this time uh, instead of index, which was uh, integer for a 
element list. Uh, then in um, Python dictionary, we provide the name of the key and we provide it in as a quote. So uh, the format is set is very similar. So we say format, name of the uh, dictionary, and then uh, in the square brackets, like uh, as I said, was an element ID of the element, index of the element in the list. Here we provide a key name. So we'd like to see the IP address, it's exactly the name of the key, how it is provided inside the dictionary. So now we could execute this script one more and you see that we are getting there exactly the value of the variable that we have, that we need for our script. So this is very basic uh, stuff. What we need to know right now, how we could uh, add the elements to the list and how we, sorry, to the array and how we, um, to the dictionary and how we could remove this element outside. So to add the elements, there are two um, ways how we could do it. The first one, uh, we could uh, just uh, using the name of our array, so uh, sorry, of our dictionary, so IP is our dictionary, we could create some um, third uh, key, say family, and uh, the value of the key would be the string value IPv4. So and uh, after that, we will use the same function that we have used previously to print. So, and if we print, uh, if we execute our Python code right now, you see that the initial uh, list, sorry, the initial uh, dictionary is not changed. So it was two elements. After we have added the new element, the new element is added at the end. However, the list, uh, was a number it where the id was going from zero one two and so on till the indefinite the dictionary is not numbered so uh, potentially it could be any um sequence how the uh, key value appears are extracted upon you uh, like running any loop which we will speak about uh, in the next session uh, then the there is no particular sequence so i mean you could not uh, predict it so that's one of the way how you could add the element, the third or the second um, option, how you could add the element is using the proper function, the, the function to add element. And uh, the same function to be honest is used to change the value of a particular element uh, is update. So it is working in the way like we have worked with the uh, functions for the list so we put the name of our dictionary the function is called update the input to this function is um json uh, like or dictionary like uh, data so we uh, put inside something like um, it's a single argument we need to provide so we put a opening and closing curly bracket meaning that this is a uh, dictionary so we are adding to the dictionary so sort of another dictionary and we create uh, the new key where pair for instance um, primary whether this IP address is primary or secondary and its value would be true and uh, we afterwards print the content of our updated or modified um, dictionary once more You see, we have added this element and it is reflected, so it is properly added to the initial dictionary. So uh, which option to use, it depends for you. You could use both. Um, in my codes, in my examples, what I am doing, I mean, examples that we are doing here or the commercial code that we are doing in our company, uh, we could do use both, uh, depending on the syntax, depending on the style of the coding, but uh, from uh, like perspective of uh, result, all of them makes uh, the same um, job for you. So we have uh, two options how we could add the elements and we have covered them so far. Now we will take a look at two options how we could delete the elements. So the first option how you could use, um, how you could delete elements using a delete instruction. So you say del, and uh, then you provide the name of the element and uh, sorry, the name of the dictionary and then 
the keys that you would like to delete. So for instance, you would like to delete a family key and uh, let's print the output of our modified dictionary. So what we supposed to have the family. So family, I have a typo, uh, family key should be deleted. Let's execute our script. And here we go, you see that in the last uh, printing output of the dictionary, we have the family element that we had previously does not exist anymore because it was deleted using this function. The drawback of this function is if the element doesn't present in your dictionary, it would raise an exception, so it is an error. So the script would be uh, broken. So that's why we could use another option which has some sort of mechanism to allow us to prevent this. Uh, the function, similar function we had in the list called pop. So to use this uh, pop function, well, another thing good about pop function, it um, returns you the result, I mean the content of a certain key uh, once it is deleted. So what we could do, we could create a, vari a variable create a called deleted value equal, then we provide the name of our dictionary. The function is pop and um, this function has a two possible inputs. So the first input uh, is the name of the key which we are going to delete. And the second one is the default value which we would uh, have if the key does not exist. So that means instead of uh, raising the exception that something is broken, their default value would be conveyed to this variable. So uh, the default value, obviously you could, depend on your application, it might be some different. Um, in our case, we will use this uh, something called none. So none is a value of the variable when uh, the value exists, but doesn't have any associated value with it is. So, and the keys that we are going to delete would be primary. And upon using this function, uh, we could take a look what we still have in our dictionary and uh, what was deleted. So that's why we add a second uh, variable into the format string. So uh, just to recap, name of the variable equals sign, name of our dictionary dot the function pop, the input to the pop function, the name of the key and the default value if key does not exist and uh, we could print and um, output of the dictionary after the removal of the element and the value of deleted element. Let's execute this Python script and um, you see that the element, that the dictionary is back to two elements and deleted says what was the um, value of this element. Um, to demonstrate that if we try and are trying to delete element which does not exist, we will copy just these two strings uh, one more time. So like doing the same operation twice, make no sense, but uh, I mean from application perspective, but makes sense here from the learning curve to explain how these things are working. And if we execute our code right now, you see that in the first case, we are getting the value of the element primary. So the value was true and that's why you see deleted true. And in the second case, we are getting none because no elements exist. And uh, however, the function has worked correctly and default value which we put was none and it was uh, conveyed to the, our element. So that's basic about uh, working with the uh, dictionary. One more thing or two more things that I want to cover with you today guys is uh, why dictionary is so important. So the dictionary in the real life are used everywhere. I have prepared for you a small dictionary. So if you take a look on this dictionary, it is a real life example of open config and data model which is used to configure the interfaces. So you see this is 
I mean, this is mainly created out of the young files. However, there are some uh, examples how you could do it automatically. If you like to learn more, come to our network automation training where we explain in, in greater details how to work with young models, with uh, Python, with JSON, YAML, and so on and so forth. So here it was created manually out of the, our open config young model. And you see that here the dictionary is mix, mix of various elements, nested elements. So uh, we have a nested element interface, which is a nested to the interface. And that's why you see if your nested element has another big element inside, then you would um, uh, create uh, such a structures. You could have also mix of lists and containers. So in this case, uh, you see that interface is a list containing two elements and each of these element is in a nutshell a container containing uh, another dictionary. Again, the dictionary is uh, nested, so it has multiple uh, parent children relationships, so it is hierarchical one. So to work with this element, you need to understand how you could navigate further deeper into the details. So um, the first example you see print shows you the way that we are once to get the whole Python um, dictionary without any going farther across the elements. The second way what you might want to do or if you want or need to navigate across the elements further, so you know how to do it in the dictionary, you have learned it today, so we need to put in the square brackets and then in the quotes the name of the uh, key, which we are going to collect the data and we could uh, have multiples of uh, the square brackets opening and, and going further across the pass. Having the list inside, we also meaning need to take into account the naming convention, I mean, or index convention of the Python dictionary and how we do this. We just put another square bracket and another square bracket, we put the idea how it works for the list. So that's why you could go to any single element of your dictionary to get its particular value. It might be quite long and in the next session we will speak about some loops so showing you how this, uh, how these concepts are working in a more uh, production oriented uh, environment. Uh, but nevertheless, this um, string gives you example how exactly you need to navigate across the tree to get uh, to the particular element either within the pure Python dictionary or mixed Python dictionary and the list. Anyway, or any level of the nesting I allowed, you could have a list as a parent of the containers and other way around. So, and that's why I'm saying it is real life scenario because all sort of um, open config, not only on config vendor, native Cisco, Nokia, Arista, anyway, um, young models could be represented in this form of JSON file or in Python dictionary. And if you're using Python to manage your network elements, then you will exactly deal with such form of Python dictionary with mixed elements. So let's execute uh, this code and you see several things. In the first uh, type, you see uh, where we print the content of our dictionary, all the elements starting with, from the root interfaces are present there. So interface, interface, and you see a list uh, starting and the, within the list you have, you see some uh, containers. In the second uh, print uh, function, we print just content of the list. That's why I don't see interfaces, interface. So we start directly with the list and we just um, point the list. And in the third print example, we really get to the bottom of this tree or particular leaf, and we are getting the value of a certain key, in this case is his name of the interface. So uh, when you work with such mixed environments, all the functions that we have learned today, like pop and update, as well as the functions you have learned in the previous sessions we were working with the list, such as append or extend, or remove or pop as well. So you just need to understand what this particular element of your Python is, whether it is container, whether it is a, 
uh, I mean container meaning father dictionary or whether it is list and you could apply the proper function to proper element and uh, extend or remove or any other form modified your dictionary or list in general your data structure and the last point that we will cover today is the option how you could merge two uh, different elements into a third one so uh, you could use a function update we have shown to you or you could use um, another syntax and again i have prepared for you um, a separate file so um, or i haven't prepared it for you i need to prepare it so let me copy dictionary and we would create a merge.py file. We would go to this file and um, let's say we have uh, this an element Python dictionary that we was using previously. We will create another, we will call it phi. So it stands for physical parameters of the interface we create in exactly in the same way. So it is a dictionary. We add um, here two more keys or three more keys. Let's say we have a speed which is um, numeric, um, 10 gigabit, for example, um, port speed of the interface, so that's why uh, 10,000. Then we add an MTU value, which again, a numeric data, or um, default MTU that we have on standard Ethernet interface. We would all, also the third key, such as enabled, um, which would be a Boolean, meaning whether interface physically enabled or not. Um, to merge the elements, as I said, we could use an update function or we could use a specific um, syntax so it creates a new uh, dictionary called interface. We create it as a merger, so double asterisk name of the first list that you, sorry, the first dictionary that you would like to join and then uh, comma double asterisk name of the third second sort fourth doesn't matter using this uh, syntax you could um, merge any amount of the dictionaries you need into a single one once this is done we will just print them out the result of this joint dictionary to take a look what we have inside we are printing this and you see that we have a single dictionary so it's not nested it's like um, using um, extend option when we was uh, you remember um, uh, speaking about the list and we was um, adding one list to another in order not to have a nested list but just rather put all the elements together so it's exactly works in this way if we use this double asterisk so it's called quarks um, then we get a single joint dictionary where all the elements are siblings to each other and you could work with it uh, in your application so when it might be useful, for instance, if you are working with uh, something requiring different API calls down to your network elements or down to application and you want to uh, collect all the data into a single um, entity which would allow you to pass this data to another part of the application so all the data are you know, centralized. So uh, that is it for today. So thank you very much for watching this video if you like it subscribe to our channel repost it i mean this video to your social medias if you're interested more about the network automation and working with data models working with real um, life examples and you want to learn how you could create such an applications for your network or for your it systems subscribe to our course we start in less than a month a new wave and we would be happy to see you among our attendees. We are discussing much more than we are discussing these three videos. However, this video is a good starting point for you to understand how the network engineers could jump into the networking automation world and not only how, but also why. It's very important to recall all these things in these videos in our training. Thank you very much. Take care. Goodbye, my friends.